Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Our members are working 60, 70, even 80 hours a week just to make ends meet. That's not a living, that's barely surviving and it needs to stop. The UAW demanding change, it's taking its contract negotiations public. Good to have you with us this noon. For the first time in decades, the negotiating teams elected by union members to represent them will be sitting at the table when these discussions happen with Chrysler, GM and Ford. I should say Stellantis. Uh, the current contracts expire in just six weeks. Let's bring in Rod Maloney, who is live to explain in the union here. Rod, making some big asks. Well, they're, they're doing that, and they're also doing it in public, Jason. And here's the big change. You know, Sean Fain has kind of shuffled the deck on everything. He went out and did the handshake with his workers, not the CEOs. And traditionally now, under the Ruther program that has been in place for about 50 years, the president would come in and hand over his economic demands to the companies this time every every year, uh, or, or every time they go for a national contract. It used to be three years. Now it's every four years. So what Fain has done is said, no, we're not going to do that this time. We're going to make it the members' demands, and we're going to do it in public so everybody knows what is at stake here, and it's not just one person making the decisions. And he has made some rather audacious claims here, or at least some audacious requests as he goes in to the domestic three with his economic demands. Let's take a look at the list. He says he wants the right to strike over plant closures. Now, that is not the way federal law reads right now in terms of what you can strike over. And so uh, that is going to be uh, probably hotly contested. Then there's, they want a working family protection program. He's basically saying that uh, working should not be the vast majority of your life and time. He wants the end of abuse of temporary workers. He wants them to become all permanent workers. He wants significant retiree pay. He wants the uh, big three plants. Actually, he said that 65 plants have been closed over the last 20 years. And he also has another big ask, which is defending communities from corporate greed. And it's essentially a restoration of what was known as the jobs bank. All of this stuff is stuff that had been removed from the UAW national contract back during the bankruptcies of 2000. 2009 and 2010. So let's hear from Sean Fain from his address that he did on Facebook last night for the membership. I know these demands sound ambitious, but I also know that the big three can easily afford them. We're currently living in a cost of living crisis caused by corporate greed. Companies are jacking up prices to make larger and larger profits while our wages have remained stagnant or regressed. The result is that we have to work longer and harder just to maintain the same standard of living we've had before. And so now he's also saying he only wants a 32-hour work week. More pay, fewer hours, better lifestyle. Well, we'll get some reaction on that coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Reporting yeah. live, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Boy, this is going to be an interesting uh, road ahead. Thanks, Rod. For the first time in U.S. history, a former president has been charged with trying to overturn an election. Former President Donald Trump facing a new indictment for allegedly trying to defraud the United States. NBC's Drew Petromo reporting from Washington that Trump is specifically alleged to have taken part in three criminal, criminal conspiracies. These allegations are truly extraordinary. Federal prosecutors say former President Trump tried multiple strategies to remain president after an election he knew he had lost. Trump is fighting back, comparing the prosecution to Nazi Germany as he continues his push to return to the presidency. Former President Trump indicted on four new charges for what prosecutors say were Trump's multi-pronged efforts to remain in the White House after losing the 2020 election. The federal indictment accuses the former president of taking part in three conspiracies to obstruct official proceedings by stopping the certification of votes on January 6, 2021, and a third broad conspiracy to disenfranchise voters. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. This is special counsel Jack Smith's second indictment of Trump. He's the same prosecutor who charged Trump with federal crimes over his handling of classified documents. Attorney General Merrick Garland appointed Smith and says Smith is acting independently. Mr. Smith and his team of experienced, principled, career, 
agents and prosecutors have followed the facts and the law wherever they lead. But Trump and his defenders say the prosecution is politically motivated. Joe Biden's running against Donald Trump and losing currently, and now we have that Justice Department indicting President Trump. Trump taking to social media, writing, why didn't they bring this ridiculous case two and a half years ago? They wanted it right in the middle of my campaign, that's why. But former Vice President Mike Pence had a different take. In a statement responding to the indictment, he says, anyone who puts himself over the Constitution should never be President of the United States. A sharp rebuke from the man who was once Trump's running mate. This is the third time Trump has been indicted, twice now by the special counsel, and once by a DA in New York over Trump's payments to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Charges in a fourth case regarding election interference in Georgia could come this month. Reporting from Washington, Drew Petromo, back to you. All right, Drew. Earlier today on the 6 a.m. hour of the morning show, we had former U.S. Attorney Barbara McQuaid on with us, and she pointed out something very interesting relating to Michigan's elected officials. Listen. Two Michiganders come across looking very good in this uh, indictment, and, and those are former leaders Mike Shirky and Lee Chatfield, who were pressured by both the former president and co-conspirator one, who I think, no secret, is Rudy Giuliani, uh, to try to flip the outcome of the election in Michigan. And they stood firm and said, no, we stand by our voters here. So I think they deserve some credit for uh, representing the people of Michigan well. Uh, Lee Chatfield, the former Michigan House Speaker and former uh, Majority Leader Mike Shirky, uh, she's referring to, they're both Republicans. Meantime, two members of the Michigan GOP are now facing criminal charges as well. Matt DiPerno and Dear Rendon are accused of trying to gain access to Michigan voting machines after the 2020 presidential election. DiPerno was backed by Trump in his bid for Attorney General, but lost to Dana Nessel in 2022. Rendon served in the state house. DiPerno's attorney says his client denies any wrongdoing. Since yesterday morning, five communities in Macomb County are still under a boil water advisory after that major water main break in Macomb Township. People living in Chesterfield Township, Lenox Township, Macomb Township, the city of Rochester and the village of New Haven lost that water pressure yesterday and you can see just what it amount, amounted to there. Residents still need to boil their water before drinking it or brushing your teeth uh, in, until further notice. The Great Lakes Water Authority says after testing to make sure the water is safe, the notice will go out and it's expected to be lifted sometime tomorrow. Let's get to Ashley in the forecast. That's some good news today. Yeah, so we're not looking at a severe threat for weather today, and that is welcome news after a pretty rocky stretch of some weather the last couple of weeks. But we do have variable sky conditions depending on where you're at at this lunch hour. Plenty of sunshine in Detroit, Grosseal, and Monroe, though it's likely that hazy sunshine from the wildfire smoke. A little more cloud covers you get up towards Pontiac, Mount Clemens, and we do have some rain closer to the Lapeer area. 71 in Sandusky, 77 at Metro, 76 off in Ann Arbor, and then we're just shy of 80 in Howell, Mount Clemens has already cracked that 80 degree mark sitting at 81. So you can see the bigger disturbance that's off to our southwest from Des Moines towards St. Louis dealing with some stronger storms developing. We just have a couple little remnant like showers across our area. So I've zoomed in to the thumb and that's where you see all these showers kind of just draping very speckly closer to I-69. So that'll be a little more impactful for our northern communities, but even still it's on the very light side. So hazy sunshine with a few of these isolated afternoon showers to our north will be closer to 84 degrees for that afternoon high with a mix of some sun and clouds. But we do warm up heading into tomorrow and then we take a little dip, but we have a chance for some rain in the forecast. We'll time it out for you in a few minutes, but if you're heading out the door, you can always take radar with you in the palm of your hand and you can get weather alerts sent straight to your phone. Download our Fort Warren weather app today if you haven't done so already.